Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Shauna and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys the makeup products that I have in my top drawer. So I saw Jessica Braun from GM Beauty do this video years ago, maybe not years, but a while ago and I thought it was a really good idea and I've been meaning to do it and never got around to it so I thought that I would do that right now. So um, this is the little organizer that I have in the top drawer of my vanity and uh, it looks like there's just a bunch of crap flung in here but there is a method to my madness on why I put the stuff that I in the spaces that I do. So this first row here are all my complexion products so like my primers, concealers, foundations, things like that. The next row are blush and highlighters, and this next row here are eye products and brow products. The next row here are lip products, and then my, this just goes wherever my eyelash curler. Ah, I'll put that off to the side. And then um, in this last section here, this is like powders, finishing powders, setting powders, bronzers, things like that. So I also have a palette over here. Palettes won't fit in this thingy, so I do have a palette that I kind of keep next to it in the drawer, and uh, I'll be sharing that with you guys too, so let's go ahead and just get started. So some of the products in here are favorites, like all-time favorites. Some products in here are things that I'm just trying to use up. Some things in here are new things that I'm just trying out, um, but I will explain what everything is as we get to it. So let's go ahead and just get started with the face stuff. So. The first thing in here is this product from La Mer, and this is the La Mer, the Perfecting Treatment. And this is just supposed to be, um, I'm not sure exactly what this is supposed to be, but the way it was explained to me in the mall, the girl in the store, she says it's basically like, a, it's a primer, basically. So, at first glance, this doesn't really do much as far as like functioning primer goes. Like, if I were to put this on one half of my face and not the other and put my foundation on, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference by the end of the day or at the beginning actually. So it's not, it doesn't really minimize your pores really. It doesn't really um, seem to make the makeup last much longer or anything like that. But what I do love this for is like the skincare properties and the way it makes my skin feel. Also, I love this the most for days that I'm not wearing foundation. So when I was at the mall, what the girl did was she put some on my hand. And when I looked in my hands and compared the two, one hand looked really like smooth and even in color and like the wrinkles had kind of like smoothed away and the other hand looked more wrinkly and crusty and it was a little bit splotchy like around the knuckles and stuff like that so like one was smooth and even and the other one was kind of splotchy and wrinkly so um, I really like the skincare benefits in this and I like the way it makes my skin look when I'm not wearing any makeup at all and I've been using this a lot in conjunction with the next product I want to tell you about which is this product here from By Terry, and this is the By Terry Cellularose Brightening CC Serum in the shade Sunny Flash, and I believe they do four different shades of this product, and I cannot rave enough about this product, you guys. I love this so much, and I've been using this a ton lately. Um, I use this on days that I'm not wearing any foundation at all, and this is fantastic. Um, I particularly like this the shade Sunny Flash. I haven't tried the other shades, but what I like about this shade is, is it makes your skin look a little bit like a little tan, like you've got this tan healthy glow, like you've been to the Bahamas or something. Um, it's got a little bit of a tint in it, but it doesn't look splotchy. And it's got like these light reflecting particles that make your skin just look beaming and glowing, but it's not greasy looking and it's not shimmery or anything like that. I can't explain it, but I just absolutely love this product. And I, it's, it, although it doesn't have like coverage in it, it just, it evens everything out and gives your skin life and makes it look like you've got like this nice healthy glow, like you've been to the beach on vacation. And I just have been really enjoying this a lot. So I'm currently 41 weeks pregnant today. So since I've been pregnant, I haven't been wearing as much makeup in general. So I've definitely been loving this, especially the last couple of months. It's just, it's fantastic and I absolutely love it. Next product in the face section is this La Mer foundation. This is the La Mer, the Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation. I was meaning to do a review on this foundation and I have tried filming it like four different times. And I was having technical difficulties with my camera and my um, memory cards because I got, a, um, I got a new vlogging camera, which is a Sony and this is a Canon. And I was using the same memory cards for both and something had happened with the memory cards and it just, it just messed up the memory cards so I ended up having to buy all new memory cards and now I have separate ones dedicated for just that camera and then other ones dedicated for just this camera so long story short I tried filming a review on this like four different times and I just couldn't get it to go so 
I'm probably not gonna do a review on this at this point because I'm so over trying to film it. Um, but I have been enjoying this foundation, you guys. Uh, I do find it to be pretty long wearing. Um, it's got the Secret Le Mer broth in it, the skincare broth in it, so I like the fact that it's got uh, skincare benefits. It's got SPF 20 in it, skin-like. Um, it makes my skin look really youthful and plump and um, it's very natural. It's not too heavy of a coverage. I like a natural finish and I like a medium kind of coverage. I don't like a super full coverage, so I have been really enjoying this foundation. And I know all this stuff is bougie, you guys. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's bougie, I know, but a little, of this goes a long way. You don't need a lot of this. Um, this, you kind of need a little bit more, so I'm sorry, but, um, and this one also, you kind of need a lot. I usually need two pumps of this, when in most foundations, I usually just need a pump. So um, I do need like two pumps of this, but it is really nice, and um, I've been enjoying it. Next product in my little face section is this foundation here from Wet n Wild. Complete opposite of bougie, you guys. This cost me four bucks on sale at Walgreens. And I love this foundation. This is in the shade Golden Beige. I love it, you guys. It's got a lot of um, dimethicones and silicones in it. I did do a complete review on this, so I'll, I don't know, I'll link to it below, I guess, if you haven't seen it. Um, but I do really love this. It makes the skin look very smooth. It's long wearing. It's uh, kind of, it's a pretty natural finish. It's, it's kind of like a semi demi matte, kind of satiny finish, I would say. It's not too, too matte. Um, but this, is one of those foundations, it's like the Revlon Color Stay Whipped, which I loved, they discontinued it, you guys. I loved that foundation so much, oh my gosh, I'm so upset. But this is a little bit similar to that in the manner um, where with that founda foundation, the longer you wore it, the better it looked. Like when your oils started to come out, it just, it just made it look like so much better, like as the day wore on. And this is kind of the same, I find when I wear this, it looks really nice at first, but then like at the end of the day when I go to wash my face, I'm like, oh, my skin still looks really nice. It still looks really even, and it's just, it's really nice, you guys. I really like this foundation a lot. All right, moving on to correcting. Um, so I've got three different correctors in here. The first one I will talk about is this one from Bobbi Brown in the shade Medium to Dark Bisque. This is the Intensive Skin Serum Corrector, and I do enjoy this. It's like a serum-y texture, so it's good. Um, it's got some skincare benefits in this, so I really do enjoy this. But I did bust out the old school Bobbi Brown correctors, and these, you guys, I love. I forgot how much I love these, and I have them in two different shades, uh, medium to dark bisque also, and I've got dark peach, which is super dark orangey. And I wear the dark peach one on days that I have like a lot of, a, like when I'm really, really dark under there, I'll wear this with concealer on top. On days that I'm not that dark really, or if I'm not wearing a ton of makeup, I'll wear the medium to dark bisque just by itself without concealer on top of it because it's a little bit lighter than the other one. It does a good job at correcting and it's close enough to my skin tone with powder on top of it that it doesn't really look super orangey or anything like that. So um, I have been really enjoying these a lot, you guys. And um, I haven't used these in a while because I kind of forgot about them and I've been using this so consistently. But since I pulled these out, if I had to pick which one I like best, I would have to say these ones. And they're more of a solid texture and you would think that they would be really thick and cakey under the eyes, but they're really not, you guys. You just need a really, really thin amount. And because they're so pigmented, they really do a, good, a great job at canceling out any discoloration. And it's not so thick that you can't put a concealer on top and it's not gonna it's not gonna look cakey, you know what I mean? So I've really been digging these things again. So love those. And moving on to concealers, I have several in here that I've been kind of bouncing in between. The first one, let's stick with Bobbi Brown, is this one here, the, the Bobbi Brown Creamy Concealer in the shade Sand, and I've really been enjoying this. Again, um, this is just something that was in my collection that I haven't used in a while, and I just thought that it should be added to my rotation so it can get some use. And I do enjoy this. I wear this purely under my under eyes, and I do like it a lot. So, and this is uh, the one that comes with the concealer on one half and the yellow like powder on the other half. I don't really use the powder to set my under eyes because I use something else that I'll get into, but I have been enjoying this concealer on top of the correctors. All right, sticking with the under eye concealers, the next Concealer I've been loving is this one here from Tarte. This is the Tarte Maracuja Creaseless Concealer. And this is a rediscovered favorite. I used to love this concealer, but then I went through a phase where I wasn't loving it and I pulled it back out again recently and I've been loving it again. But this concealer is very tricky 
This is great if you've got uh, a lot of texture under your eyes or if you've got really dry under eyes, um, fine lines and things like that because it, it, it doesn't really crease. I mean, nothing is truly, truly creaseless, but um, it really, it really doesn't crease that bad, that much. And this is one of those ones that has to be set with powder, but the type of powder that you use can really make a difference on how this applies and how this lays and wears throughout the day. So I found that you really got to pair it with the right powder to make it work. But when you do, it works and I love it. So um, for a while there, I was setting this with the banana powder from the Anastasia um, Contra palette, but that particular powder with this did not work. Neither did the Tarte Amazonian clay powder, didn't work. And the reason it didn't work was it would look okay in the bathroom or in my vanity or something like that. So I would apply it and it would look okay. But then when I went outside and I like looked in the rear view mirror in my car or something, you could see this really obvious line of demarcation from where the concealer ended and where the rest of my skin began. And it, it, it's like, it was like this weird kind of mask of concealer that was just super obvious. And I would see it in fluorescent lighting. If I was on a dressing room, trying on clothes somewhere or something, I would see this like really harsh, just sh harsh, obvious line of demarcation. And so I was like, oh, this concealer, it looks nice in the bathroom, but then when you leave the house, it looks terrible. Well, I've noticed that the concealer I've been pairing it with lately, um, the... Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, and then this Becca one, which I'm gonna get into in a minute, have been the powders that I've been pairing with this, and it just, it looks so much smoother and so much better um, with this concealer. So, and another thing with this is, you have to use the tiniest amount, you guys. Don't go caking the stuff on. It's very creamy, it's very thick. Um, it is emollient though, but if you just use a teeny tiny amount and kind of thin it out, and then set it with the right powder, it's just beautiful. And it's really nice if you've got texture under your eyes and fine lines and crepiness and things like that. So I love that. And I've got a few more concealers, you guys. I'm sorry. The next one um, is from Collection, which is a British brand. And I did pick this up when we were in the UK a while ago. This is in the shade Warm Medium 3. And I'm using this just because I'm just trying to use it up, you guys. It is a good concealer. It's long wearing. It's got good coverage. Um, it's a really nice creamy texture. I do enjoy this concealer, but I've got other concealers that I like better. It's not my favorite, but um, it is a good product and I'm just trying to use up whatever's left of this so I can toss it. So there's that. Next two concealers are from Tarte. These this is Tarte Shape Tape. You guys know all about this. I've got them in the shades Light Medium and Light Sand. And I use these for, I use the Light Sand one for kind of like brightening like the center of the face. And I use the other one for like concealing um, like around my nose and any blemishes or discoloration that I have on the rest of the face. I do not like these under my eyes because I do have texture under there and it can look a little cakey under the eyes. So I don't like it there, but I do really, really love it on the rest of the face because it's got such high coverage and it's a very nice consistency and it does set and dry down without needing to use a powder on top of it or anything like that. So I have really been enjoying these concealers for other areas of the face. And then the last concealer I want to talk about, you guys, is from Bare Minerals, and this is the Bare Minerals Concealer in the shade Bisque. And this is one of those products that is a favorite of mine that I wear all the time, that I use all the time for years and years that I just never really talk about on this channel because it's not fun and it's not, you know, it's just, it's just not fun, you guys. It's just one of those things that's got, it's one function that I use it for and I love it for what it is that I use it for. So what I use this for is for touching up my under eye concealer just in the really deep hollows of like the eye troughs or whatever they're called. Because sometimes when I get wear just, just in there in the darkest part of my eye, it's really hard to touch up concealer you guys. Once, like if you use a liquid concealer or a creamy concealer, once you've set it with powder, it's really hard to touch up without it looking cakey. So this is nice because I use just a really thin, narrow, fine kind of brush and I just kind of put it just along the darkest parts of the eyes and it really refreshes and brightens the eye area. So I do use this all the time for just that one specific purpose and that is it, but I do use it all the time. All right guys, moving on to the next section. Let's move on to the blush. So um, I'll start with, I've got several in here. Um, let's start with these three here because um, these are kind of like my, my favorites that I kind of keep in my rotation at all times, it seems. Um, the first one is from Tarte, and this is one of the Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Blushes in the shade Natural Beauty. And I really love this one. It's a really deep, bright, kind of like reddish pink. And I find that this is really natural blush for me. This is kind of the color that I flush when I'm sweating or 
um, working out or something like that. So I really enjoy this blush and um, yeah, wear it all the time. Next favorite is from Becca. This is the Becca Mineral Blush in the shade Flower Child. This is one of my all time favorite, favorite blushes. And this is like a pinky peach blush. So if I want the pinky peach look, this is the one I go to. And this is kind of comparable to NARS Orgasm. I prefer this one to Orgasm because this one's um, a little bit more pigmented and it seems to, to show up a little bit better on my skin. And there's not as much metallic-y gold in this as there is in the Orgasm one. I've noticed with the NARS Orgasm, plus I can't stand the name, <laughs> NARS Orgasm. Anyway, when I wear that one, I notice that my cheeks look more gold than anything. There isn't as much like pink pigment, pigment coming through, so I prefer this one personally. There's a little bit of a sheen there, but it's not really that detectable on the skin. It doesn't look greasy or shiny or anything like that. It just looks really skin-like and natural, so I love this one. Next one is from Clinique, and this is one of the Cheek Pop blushes in the shade Cola Pop, and it is a really deep, pigmented like burnt blood red color and this is a little too pigmented for me to just kind of put on my cheeks all together but what I use this for and what I use this for sometimes too is um and I've done this since high school you guys I've done this for years but you know Charlotte Tilbury swish and pop blushes where it's got like the lighter shade on the outside and then the deeper shade on the middle for, to just pop on the center of the cheek that's kind of what I use this for because it just makes the cheek look less flat if you just got one color going up your cheek, then it can kind of like just look one dimensional. And if you put just a brighter pop of, of something just on the apples, the center of the apples, it can kind of like give your face and your cheeks a little bit more shape. And that's what I use this for. So this, I usually use no matter what color blush I use, um, sometimes I will use this to just pop just on the center of the apples of the cheeks and it just makes the cheeks look more round and it just gives them more shape and dimension. So that's what I use this for. Couple more blushes. Next one, I've got the box blush from Benefit in the shade Dallas. And this is just one of those really pretty, like natural, rosy, like nudie colors. And this goes with everything. And I do wear this a lot. It's almost like kind of like a bronzerish kind of color. So um, this is, I just really like it. It's just a really nice, natural, neutral blush. So I've been really enjoying that. Last Blush is a new product to me. I just picked this up recently, and this is from Milk Makeup, and this is the Milk Lip and Cheek Stain. I don't know if it's a stain or color or whatever. Lip and Cheek, just the Milk Makeup Lip and Cheek, and this is in the shade Rally, and this is so pretty, you guys. I really, 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 really love this color, and I especially wear this on days where I'm not, where I'm wearing, when I'm doing the no makeup thing with the By Terry. I'll put this on. Um, the apples of the cheeks, I'll dot a little bit over, just over the brow. I'll put a little on the chin and just, it's just so pretty, you guys. And it just makes your skin look really radiant. It's just, it's a very glowing kind of color. I can't explain it, you guys, but it's just, it is so, so pretty. And it's just a really beautiful kind of like rosy pink color. It's just gorgeous. I love it. I have really been enjoying this blush. And then lastly in that section, the cheek section, is this highlighter here from Sleek Makeup. This is the Sleek Highlighting Palette in the shade Solstice. So you've got four different colors here. You've got um, one cream right here, which is like kind of like a beigey color. And then you've got a yellow here, which is basically MAC Nylon eyeshadow. It's just a really frosty, pale yellowy gold color and then these two here are more this one's also real quick this one um the yellowy gold one is like kind of like an oilier kind of texture it's powder but it's i think there's more oils pressed into this one because it feels a little bit more moist than the other two these last two here there's a peachy one here and then like a more lavender color one here and those are very powdery feeling um but those two happen to be the ones that i kind of use the most actually the peachy one and the lavendery one I don't hardly use this cream one as much as I would like to, I should. Um, and then this gold one I've been using a lot, kind of in the same way that I use MAC Nylon. I've been using it on the inner corners of the eyes, tip of the nose, cupid's bow, things like that. Um, and then these other two I've been using just more on my cheeks and I just, I've been really enjoying this palette, you guys. It's very shiny, but if you use like kind of a fluffier brush, um, it won't be quite as obvious. So this, you guys, could go either way. You can make it super bold or you can make it really subtle depending on the brush you use. So I just use kind of like a fluffier brush and just get like a nice glow without it being too much. 
and it doesn't seem to highlight my texture or anything like that. So I've really been enjoying this palette a lot. Very inexpensive, sleek makeup. Got it at Ulta and have been digging it big time. All right, moving on to eyes. Let's go ahead and just get started with the palette. So I did order the Christian Dominique palette and I wasn't gonna order it at first because it's like, okay, warm neutrals and a couple of funky pops, but I don't know. I caved and I finally bought it mainly because of this purple color here because it is just a gorgeous, really pigmented purple. I'm wearing it on my eyes right now, just kind of like through the crease. But um, I've been really enjoying this palette, you guys. I've used it pretty much every day ever since I got it. But you've got these warm mattes on the top here. Um, yeah, warm mattes. I love my warm neutrals. And then you've got these shimmers here, which are just so, so shimmery, you guys. They're really... They're really shiny, you guys. And so I use a lighter hand when I wear the shimmery ones, but I really mainly like it for the mattes. The mattes are so buttery and so smooth and they blend out beautifully without hardly any effort at all. And I've really been enjoying this palette. And I have actually been getting a lot of use out of that purple one there too. I haven't really used this blue one in the shade Cold Brew yet out, but it is a pretty color and it's, um, it's a little bit more of a neutrally blue, so I think this could be quite wearable. So I definitely need to be using that one, but I have been enjoying the purple. I've been really loving the warm mattes. I love warm mattes. I've got a gazillion of them, so I probably, I basically just bought all this for that purple color, you guys, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. But I have been really enjoying it, and the blendability is just fantastic. I really, really have been enjoying these palettes. Another eye palette I've really been enjoying is this one from Charlotte Tilbury, and this is the Golden Goddess palette. And my favorite color out of this palette is this like mushroomy taupey one and i don't normally wear colors like that but lately i've been kind of like gravitating gravi gravitating i've been gravitating more towards like kind of cooler colors lately i find so i've really been enjoying that mushroomy color i do follow along with charlotte tilbury's tutorials she's got some videos on her channel where she does the golden goddess look using this palette so um i've just been i've just been really enjoying it you guys this lighter color here i've been enjoying kind of all over the lid and then I use the mushroomy one like through the crease and then I use this darker brown one here like in the outer corner and like smudged underneath and sometimes I'll top it off with this shimmerier one, shimmerier one in the bottom corner. But I have been really enjoying this palette a lot lately. So love this. Um, what else have I got in here? Oh, going backwards, uh, eyeshadow primer. I have been using the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion in Eden. This is the one that's got a little bit of a tint to it so it can kind of like even out um, any discoloration on your eyes. So I really like this. This is a really good primer, you guys. I've really been enjoying this one. And then I've got a lot of single eyeshadows in here, you guys. I have three MAC pigments that I've pressed into these little like sample container thingies. Um, if you don't know how to do that, just do a YouTube search on how to press powdered eyeshadow or how to repress eyeshadow. There's tons of videos on it. But um, this is in the shade tan and it's just just a, a gorgeous tan color. The next one is in the shade melon. It's a melon pigment, which is kind of like a, a warm peachy gold color. Been really enjoying this. And the next one is in the shade naked. And this has got to be one of my favorite MAC products of all time. I love the pigment in the shade Naked. You guys, it is such a beautiful, like, nude. Ugh, you're not going to be able to see that's probably blending into my skin tone, but it's such a beautiful, like, nude, which is with just this gorgeous sheen, and I absolutely love it. So I've been wearing those a lot. I've got another MAC single in the shade Honey Lust. And this is one that's definitely better wet, but um, I like it dry too. So during the day, I've been if I just want a little something, something on my eyes, but not too much color, not too much depth, I'll just wash this over my lids and just this by itself. So I've really been enjoying this one. Another one with MAC, let's just stick with our MAC theme for now, is this one here called Uninterrupted. And I believe they discontinued this for a while and I heard someone say that they were bringing it back or brought it back or something. So I'm not sure if they have or not, but this is just like a really pretty like camel brown color and I love this color. When they did discontinue it, I couldn't understand why they would discontinue it because it's just such an awesome color. It's just a pukey like camel brown. 
But um, if, if it is discontinued, I know you can get other similar colors, like Bobbi Brown do one in the shade Camel. Um, Makeup Geek do one that's kind of similar. I think it's called Desert Sands or something like that. I forget, but it's definitely a dupable color, but this is just one that I pulled out that I've been using right now. It's It's been sitting in my collection forever and not getting any use, so this is one of those ones that I just kind of pulled out. Um, to get some use out of. Same with these little pigments. I don't Next, I've got this eyeshadow here from Inglot. This um, shape pan has been discontinued, but they still have the same color. And this is in the color... Oh, shoot, you guys. It's completely worn off. It's completely worn off. I can't tell you the color. You guys, I'm sorry. But um, it is like a taupey grayish brown color. And I've been really enjoying colors like this lately. I've been, I've been, I don't know, I've been kind of like getting drawn towards the taupes lately. But this is just a matte taupe and it's just a really pretty shadow color. So it just gives you a nice little natural shadow and some natural looking like definition in the eye socket area. So sometimes I'll just like um, put like a cream eyeshadow all over my eyes just to kind of like even it all out as a base. And then I'll just run some of this like just through the sockets and just underneath and it's just a really simple eye look, you know, but really been loving this. And then I've got this one here also from MAC. This is the MAC, um, I think it's the highlighting powder in the shade Emphasize. And this one is an oldie but a goodie. Um, and this is another one that I pulled out of my collection that's just been kind of sitting there gathering dust. And I was going through my collection and thought, why aren't I using this? Because it's just a really nice white powder, basically. I've been using this to highlight the brow bone area. I've been using this kind of like all over the lid as a base. Um, I've been using this to kind of highlight other areas of the face sometimes. I don't set my under eyes with this, but um, you can set your under eyes with this if you're not as crinkly as I am. Um, if you want a little bit more brightness. And it's not completely matte. There is a slightest bit of sheen in it. But um, it's just a really nice highlighting color, especially just like under the brow bone and stuff like that. Inner corner of the eye. And then I've got a few like kind of like creamy, creamed powder blush or blushes, um, eyeshadows, singles. I've got this one from ColourPop in the shade Roulette, which is just their black one. And this one, you guys, I use as an eyeliner. And I love it as an eyeliner. This is my favorite eyeliner of all time, you guys. I like this better than gel eyeliners. I like it better than pencil eyeliners, liquid eyeliners. I love this for lining my eyes. And if you have a more mature skin, um, you might like this too. I, my eyelids are pretty like tight still for now. But um, why I like this is, is because you just get a softer line. It's just not so harsh, you know what I mean? And um, I just really enjoy this as a liner. Next one, I've got the shade Bandit, which is just a really warm brown. And this I use a lot um, just to kind of smoke out into the under eye area because that area, the under eye area, doesn't seem to last that long for me. Like eyeshadow, I put it there and then two seconds later it's just gone. So this lasts a little bit longer. So when I want a little bit more warmth under the under eye area, I'll use this with just like a teeny tiny brush or something, a pencil brush or whatever. And then um, there's this one here in the shade Fairfax, which is just a super dark brown. And same thing, I've kind of been using this more as a liner than anything. And I love it for that purpose. Lastly, I've got this one from Christian Dior. Bougie again, I know. Um, and this is the Dior Show Fusion Mono Matte like cream to powder eyeshadow in the shade Nocturne and it's like a it's like a black but it's not super black. It's more of like a kind of like a charcoal -y gray color and I hardly ever use this you guys and I pulled this out to put in my top drawer so I could get some use out of it and I'm noticing that I'm still not using it. It is a nice product and I do really like it but I just haven't been using it so I'm going to try to use it. It is nice. All right, and then I've got a few uh, liners. So I've got this black liner here in the shade Zero from Urban Decay. And this I've been using lately. I'm just trying to use this up, you guys. I've been using this to tight line the upper lash line. And then I've got the Smashbox Always On Gel Aligner in the shade Nymph, which is the dark, like, indigo, bluey, purpley one. And this one, and also this one here from Marc Jacobs. This is the Marc Jacobs Highliner Gel Eye Crayon in the shade F Ink. Get it? Ink. Um, think. Anyway, this is like a dark, like indigo-y, bluey one. These are both kind of like indigo-y blues. And I pulled these out to use because I never use these and I thought that I would get some use out of them. And so far, since they've been sitting in this top drawer, I've only used each of these like once or twice. 
But um, I really enjoy this color, especially if you have brown eyes, because it really brings out like the amber in your eyes. And so I, I pull these out just to get more use out of them, but I actually don't really use these as much as I would like, but I will definitely try to use them a little bit more in the future. And then I have a few brow pot products. Um, the first one is a brow pen from Stila. This is the Stay All Day Waterproof Brow Color Pen. And I do like these pens. It's just, it's really hard to find a pen that will work because it's either too, too, too dark or too, too, too light that you can't get any pigment out of. This is a little bit dark, but what I've been using this for is just to kind of feather in hair strokes just in the front of my brow. Um, it's very time consuming to get a natural looking brow with this pen, so I'm using this just to kind of use it up. But I do like it for just feathering in little hair like strokes just in the front of the brow. And then I've also got this uh, product here from Hourglass. This is the Brow Sculpting Pencil in the shade Soft Brunette. This I'm just trying to use up, you guys. I do like it. It's a nice, decent product. It's just not particularly long wearing, so uh, I'm just trying to use this up. Lastly, I have this brow gel here from Urban Decay in the shade Warm Brown. And again, um, it's been sitting in my collection and I haven't touched it, so I pulled it out just to get some use out of it. I do enjoy it. I wouldn't say it's my all-time favorite brow gel, but it is really nice. It's good, nice, good brow gel. All right, guys, let's move on to the lip section. So I'll do the balms first. So the first one here is from Sarah Hap. This is a Sarah Hap Lip Slip. And this is just a really beautiful, like glossy balm and it's so hydrating and I don't know what it is about this product. It makes your lips just look really plump and just really smooth. It's a really nice product and it has a really faint smell of like roses. And then I brought these two from Mac. There's a lot of Mac stuff in here, so it's weird. And I feel bad mentioning these because they are discontinued and I wasn't gonna, but it's like, I just wanna show you guys what really is in my top drawer and these really are in my top drawer. But these are also lip balms, and they're, um, this one here is in the shade Hush Hush, and it's just kind of like an, a peachy gold color. And the other one here is in the shade Tread Gently, and this is in like a, like a yellowy gold color. And these are just such nice lip balms, you guys. They're just, they're really like smooth and hydrating. Um, these are a little bit more um, Vaseline-y feeling, then the Sarah, where did it go? Yeah, so these are a little bit more like like Vaseline feeling than this one. The Sarah Hap one is definitely like a thicker, stickier kind of like um, lip balm that's got a little bit more glossiness to it. This one is a little bit more like Vaseline. So it's 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 hydrating, but they, they've got like a, like a sheen to them, like the shimmer in them that is just so pretty, you guys. So I've really been enjoying these and I wish they would bring them back. Um, so I'm sorry, but you can still find these every once in a while. I found them before on eBay. I found them on Strawberry Net and stuff like that. So if you can find these, then definitely um, I would recommend them. If you could find them, buy them. All right, next up, we've got a couple of lipstick combos. So I've got uh, this liner here from MAC. A lot of MAC, sorry guys. Um, anyway, this is a liner in the shade Half Red, and I'm almost out of it, you guys. I love this liner. This is one of my all-time favorite lip liners, and I do wear this a lot with um, this pencil here. This is one of those chubby pencil things from Buxom in the shade. This is also in the shade Hush Hush, which is weird, because that balm I just showed you, this one is in the shade Hush Hush from MAC. This is Hush Hush from Buxom, and it's just a really beautiful, like, dusty rose color, and I've been pairing these together quite a lot. Um, also, I've got uh, this shade here from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Bond Girl. This has been like one of my favorites this month, you guys. It is such a gorgeous like, like rosy red color. It's like, it's almost like a neutral way to wear red, like a wearable red. Um, it is just so pretty, you guys. And I've been wearing it a lot with that half red color from MAC and I've just been loving it. Then I've got another lip liner here from Rimmel in the shade Cafe Olay, which is just a gorgeous, like kind of like brownie, like a rosy, can you see that? Like a rosy brown color. It's so pretty. And I've been wearing that with this lipstick here from MAC. God, there's so much MAC. Um, and this is from the Patrick Star collection in the shade Mama Star, which is this beautiful, like, like rosy brown. shade there and I know the Cafe Olay lip liner is one of Patrick Star's favorites too so I've been really enjoying this combo and then finally in the lip section I've got another MAC lipstick in the shade Myth which is just a pale nude color and this 
I wear with everything, you guys. This is one of those nudes that I put just in the center of the lips just to make my lips look fuller and more three-dimensional and stuff like that. So I love Myth and I pretty much use this in my rotation all the time, so. Now we're getting into our last section, you guys. So I've got my eyelash curlers from Shu Uemura. Standard tool, everybody needs my eyelash curlers. And then I've got some beauty sponges. This is the L'Oreal one, which I really enjoy. And then I've got one of the little, these are dirty because I use them, you guys. And then one of the smaller um, Real Techniques ones. I've really been enjoying this one for like blending out my under eye concealer. And I also love this for applying powder to my under eyes. So love this. And then next I've got this powder here from Becca. This is fairly new product. This is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Setting Powder. And this is very, very, very similar, you guys to the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, if not identical. So if you already have that one, you don't need this one, but I did get this one to kind of try and I absolutely love it. I love it on top of any concealer and I especially love it on top of the Tarte Maracuja one. And I love to apply this with a damp sponge and I just, just barely tap it in there and get a nice thin coat and then like dot it on my under eyes. And I also use the flat side to powder my face too. So if I just want just to get the center of the face, it's just a nice small surface for powdering. Finally, I've got the powder products. Um, this should probably have been in my other section, the cheek section, but it wasn't. But this is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I've just been trying this out. This is a new product to me and I've been loving it. Especially the smell. It smells like kind of like a coconutty smell and I love coconut anything. And um, this is a very warm blush, and this is in the shade Deep. So I think there's one, a, a lighter shade that probably might be better for my skin tone, but I've been enjoying this one, you guys. So I've been really enjoying it. And then finally, two more things. I have this powder here from Urban Decay. This is the Urban Decay D Slick. This I have had for so long, and I'm just trying to use it, you guys, because it hasn't been getting any use. And this is really good. Um, I should probably hold off on using this until I have the baby, my skin goes back to being a grease slick like it used to be. At the moment, my skin's more like normal, you know, normal combo maybe in the middle. But um, I've been enjoying this just for setting like the T-zone area of my face so that I don't get too much oil breakthrough because this is great at oil control. And then lastly, I have this little palette here from Hourglass. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette and it comes with the shades Dim Light, Incandescent Light, and Radiant Light. And I don't really use these two as much. I've been using it mostly for the Dim Light, just to, um, just to use it, you guys, because I've had this palette in my collection forever and it hasn't been getting any use. Um, sometimes I use the Incandescent one in the middle to kind of um, give me a, a bit more sheen on the cheeks. You know, I'll put it over my blush and stuff like that. This bronzer one, it's not a bronzer, but um, you know what I mean, the bronzy colored one in Radiant Light, I haven't hardly used it all, so I need to, Start using that one. All right, guys, that's it. Those are all the products that I've been using in my rotation right now. These are the products that are in my top drawer. So hopefully you enjoyed this little video and saw some things you might want to try. And thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. And then over here, we've got the crib. And we've got these wallflowers here, which um, were really expensive, and the seller on Etsy was kind of